Well, good morning, and thank you so much for joining me. It's good to be with all of you today. Hope you're having a good start to your morning. When I was in fifth grade, at the beginning of each academic quarter, our teacher asked us, our fifth grade teacher asked us to to arrange our desks into groups of four or five. And so there would be five or six groups of desks throughout the classroom, each having about four to five students in, in each group. And then over the course of that academic quarter, each group had the opportunity to accrue points for their team. And so if you turned in your assignment on time or if you were quiet when you were supposed to be quiet, then, then you could accrue points for your team. And at the end of the quarter, whatever group had the most points was declared the winner, which was a big deal. It came with a prize. But most importantly, at the beginning of the next academic quarter, the winning group was brought in front of the whole class, and each of the members of that winning group were, were declared to be group leaders for the next quarter. And then one by one, each member of this winning group was given the opportunity to pick their group for the next quarter. So they would start on the left, Stephanie would pick who she wanted, and then Mark would pick who he wanted, and then Brian would pick who he wanted, until every single student in the classroom was accounted for. Now, if I'm honest, I mean, really, I look back at that experience, and I'm a bit horrified. I'm a bit horrified because, you know, my, my fifth grade teacher, I'm sure her, her intentions were good. I'm sure her heart was in the right place, but I can't even imagine at 11 years old to watch as every other student in the class was chosen before you, to be one of the last two or three kids standing around waiting to be picked, to be told essentially by your fellow classmates that you are the last person that I would want in my group. And someone unfortunately had to be the last person picked and it was often as you might imagine the same few kids you know it's one thing to be picked last in basketball or dodgeball but then you can simply say well i'm not just i'm just not that athletic right it's just not my thing but when you're told by your peers you were the last person that we would want in our group i mean gosh that that is rough that is rough and, and you know i i bring this up because I believe that, that for many of us within the church, we, we believe that, that we're the last picks on God's team. That we believe with all sincerity that God, that God has saved us, He has chosen us, that we are legitimate Christians. But, but many of us, I know, believe that, that we're the last pick. That we've been picked, we've been chosen by God to just kind of fill out the roster. That because of the sin in our life, because of the mistakes that we've made, because of the choices we made, because of the challenges in our life, that, that we're on the team, we're on the bus, but that we represent the last pick, or the last picks. But friends, if, if that's where you're at, or if you ever, from time to time, struggle with this lie, I want to direct you to a, a really helpful verse, and it's 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22, and this is what Samuel says there. He says, for the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people, because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. The Lord was pleased to make you his own. Now, we always want to read Scripture in context. And, of course, when Samuel first shared this, he was talking to who? He was talking to the Jews, to the original people of God. And, of course, it, this was meant originally for the Jews. This is who... who Samuel was speaking to. But I, I believe that, that while this verse very much is still meant for the Jews, that God was pleased to, to choose the Jews to be his own people, that this verse is now applicable to all who constitute, who make up the people of God, to all who are in Christ, both Jew and Gentile, that the Lord would say over us, that he was pleased to make us his own. And, and why do I believe that? Well, here's a couple of reasons. Number one, because, because God is God. And because he is God, he, he cannot be compelled. He cannot be forced to do anything. So if, if God has done anything, 
it is only because it was pleasing for him to do it. Because he did it according to his own good pleasure. Can't be compelled, he can't be forced, can't be tricked into doing anything. And so if God is, has chosen you, then, then you can rest assured that it was pleasing for him to do that. And we all understand, don't we, that, that none of us are followers of Jesus because of our own initiative. Because we sought out the Lord. No, if any of us would call ourselves followers of Jesus, if any of us have been born again, it is only because the Father, in His own initiative, pursued us. That we were given grace by the Holy Spirit to believe and to seek the Lord. The, the Lord, He can't be forced. He, he, he can't be compelled to do anything. And secondly, we, we know that that the Lord was, was pleased to make us his own, to call us his own, because God exists outside of time and space. And, and because he sees everything, the past and, and the future all at once, he, he can never experience buyer's remorse. Before you ever came to him, before you ever became a follower of Jesus, the Lord was already aware of what was in your heart and was already aware of every sin that you would ever commit. So that there's nothing that you've done, nothing that you could do that would make God say, wow, wow I, I sure wish I would have made a, a different decision regarding this person. It's just not the way that it works. He never has buyer's remorse because he exists outside of time and space. And so friends, if, if you're in a spot right now where, where you just feel like you're, you're the last pick on the team, the last pick within God's church. If there is doubt within you that, that God is pleased to, to have you as part of his family, to have you as a son, to have you as a daughter, I, I encourage you, head to 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22, and read this again for yourself. Speak this over yourself. Because the Lord was pleased. The Lord was pleased to make you his own. That is true of you. That's true of all of us who are followers of Jesus. He was pleased to make us his own. God bless you, church, and I hope you uh, were encouraged by today's word.